In the Road to Pandemic Resilience, put out by Harvard University with support from the Rockefeller Foundation, it's explained that what they plan to do next is much bigger than most people realize. They say they'll start out in June with 5 million tests a day, and by late July, they'll have it up to 20 million, with the eventual goal being 30 to 100 million tests per day. Their first phase in the plan begins with the front line, essential workers who they say may be spreading the disease. The CDC guidance is naming people without symptoms a priority category for testing. This testing is to be accompanied by massively scaled up contact tracing, isolation, and quarantine supported by telehealth, food deliveries, and free entertainment access. Phase 1 of their plan relies heavily on simultaneous recruitment and training of substitute temporary workers whose normal jobs are non-essential and moving them into paid roles in the essential sector. It's not a one-off thing. This testing, tracing, and isolation are said to be a six-month minimum, possibly 18 to 24, and regular and often testing is intended for the entire population. 30 to 100 million tests per day, if you want to leave your house, that is, because they say there will be certificates. When would it end? They're looking for mandatory employer, school, and benefits-based testing programs. Testing capacity is increasing thanks to the next-generation sequencing made possible by things like spit tests that are now approved. They want to test you over and over and track how the modifications are coming along. We talked about this in the last video. This stuff they're unleashing upon us now, the new vaccines, it's not like that which you've known. It's in these plants from Harvard and the Rockefellers and Co. that your local trusted sources, mayors, health officials, community and faith leaders, they're being included in this planning. They've got it all laid out, and they say the time is here for action. But we don't have to do this. We can choose not to be afraid anymore and to go back to living life, maybe with a little more common sense and courtesy. Really, it's psychological abuse what's happening and being planned right now. You let them school children like they're intending for the next five years, and just imagine what those children are going to grow up like. They're going to have a whole other view on what the world should be, and I don't think it'll be for the better. And look at what's happening. A generation that survived plenty has been, in large part, shut up in rooms, unable to hold their family to celebrate with them. They're being imprisoned for their safety. How many won't see another free day? I wonder if they'd have been up front in the beginning that this was no two-week deal, would you have agreed to just give away your old life as you have done with their incremental expansion of the situation? They know how to nudge you along into the mindset that they want you to have. You tune right into their programming, and before you know it, we're here. In reality, we have the power to right all of these upset things. It could be better today if enough people wanted it to be so. After all, it's only a choice between fear and love. The eyes of fear want you to abandon physical embraces, be ruled by digital technologies, and give up your autonomy for a false safety. The eyes of love instead see that this forced separation hurts society more than a virus ever could. What a minority of the world has attempted here cannot be allowed to continue. It's time to save ourselves. They got one thing right in these papers. The time is here for action. We need to share this information. We need to let people know we shouldn't be afraid anymore. It's time to live again. The sources are linked below in the description. Please put this video anywhere that you're able to. Thank you for listening.